This morning, the beginning of a new trilogy by one of the most acclaimed authors in America. Don Winslow is the veteran crime writer behind dozens of books, including Savages and The Death and Life of Bobby Z, both of which were turned into movies. Starting 17 years ago, he began releasing a trilogy about the war on drugs. Bestsellers, The Power of the Dog, The Cartel, and The Border. Now he's turned his focus to the Irish and Italian mobs of New England, a subject he's wanted to write about for decades. City on Fire is the first of three planned books, a beginning for him, and as we learned, also an end. Danny Ryan watches the woman come out of the water like a vision emerging from his dreams of the sea. Except she's real and she's going to be trouble. Women that beautiful usually are. The book starts right here. East Matunic State Beach. This is actually called Jerusalem. Don Winslow's epic new trilogy starts in the place he knows better than anywhere else. The place that raised him, coastal Rhode Island. How much of the book is rooted in real history? Oh, most of it. It's nothing but a lot of hookwick. Real life mob stories were splashed across headlines here for decades. Stories Winslow blended with his own past, including years working as a private investigator before he became one of the most famous crime writers in America. I had this idea quite a while ago about, uh, there was an incident that took place on a beach between Italian and Irish mobsters. And uh, it sounded to me like Helen of Troy. The hero of City on Fire, part of a three book series that Winslow's already finished, is Danny Ryan, a longshoreman constantly pulled between established criminal codes of violence and retribution and his better instincts. Under Winslow's watch, Ryan becomes just as memorable as his last great hero, DEA agent Art Keller, the main character in a previous Winslow trilogy that focused on the war on drugs. I spent more time with Art Keller than I've spent with any other real human being in my life. I was 23 years with that character virtually every day. Uh, Danny, not much less than that. I, I think the, the Catholicism that I grew up in is present in both of them. Mm -hmm. Big time. Big time. Maybe the, the black and white way of looking at the world. You know, in terms of you're very definitive when you see something that you believe is wrong yeah. or right. Yeah, yeah. We spoke with Winslow inside a playhouse his parents once operated, first opened in 1933. This place is Theater by the Sea in Matunic, Rhode Island. I started here as an actor when I was 12. Uh, this place has a, a lot of history for the Winslows. All kinds of people have performed here. Uh, Mae West, uh, W.C. Fields, uh, Groucho Marx, Marlon Brando, Henry Fonda. Huh. My dad was a big burlesque fan. He loved burlesque comics. So I finally wrote a burlesque show. You, you, you don't write a burlesque show. You type a burlesque show. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, and we did it here with uh, Jennifer Flowers was the, the lead. The Jennifer Flowers. The Jennifer Flowers was the girl singer in the show. So that's the genesis of Don Winslow's storytelling. Yeah, coming here and hearing and doing kind of the spoken word, the, if you will, the muscularity of words, you know, the sounds of them, I think was really key. In recent years, Winslow has focused his unique intensity and communication skill on more than just books. He's become one of the country's most prominent political activists, peppering his Twitter feed with dozens of posts a day and producing videos opposing former President Donald Trump and Republicans that have been viewed more than 250 million times. For the left, it's been heroic work. For the right, it's toxic. I get called a lot of names, you know, on social media that are, are personal and, and sometimes threatening. But you do a lot of the attacking yourself on social media now. I do. I do, but I'm right. <laughs> it must be nice to feel it's, that you are right. Well, look, you can have your own opinion, but the facts are the facts. We had a president, and we all saw it, Jeff. We all heard it. We all saw it. You saw it. 
you heard it, come on, try to overthrow the government of the United States, try to overturn a legal election. What are the consequences? This has been almost singularly the focus of your, of your Twitter feed. Lately? For the past couple months now. Yeah. Do you think people are listening? I think so. There are those who would say, why are you focusing on the past and the guy who was president instead of the person who is president and the future right now? Because it seems like you talk a lot more about Trump than you do about Biden. Well, because the past is still with us. And so he's not president anymore. They took away his Twitter account. They took away Facebook. Mm -hmm. He's relegated to sending out press releases on email. Right. But there is aiders and as abettors, 50 of whom, 50 people involved in the January 6th insurrection are now candidates for government office. Josh Hawley, who was encouraging the rioters, is sitting in the Senate spewing his who idiocies. You who you refer to, to routinely as a piece of Yes. But does that talk just fuel the general atmosphere of anger? Listen, Jeff, these people are bullies. They are classic schoolyard bullies. They talk tough and they act tough until someone punches them in the nose and then they go running to teacher. I have no problem, metaphorically speaking, punching them in the nose. It needs to happen. Because Winslow believes these times are so extraordinary, he says it's time to refocus his full attention. So even though he is still at the full height of his book writing powers, he surprised us with an announcement. Book number three is going to be my last published book. I am uh, going to retire. You're retiring? Yes. Why? It's time to do something else. Uh, I want to continue on speaking out where, where I see what I think is wrong. That's a big deal. It is a big deal. And it's, it's not a decision that I made easily, you know. Uh, I think, Jeff, I've told the stories that I want to tell. And I don't want to keep writing just for the sake of publishing or just for the sake of a paycheck, you know. Uh, so I, I think now is the time. Wow. Don is also <laughs> constantly supporting and encouraging other writers on his Twitter feed and other places. He says he wants to continue to do that, to bring up that next generation of writers. But hats off to his writing career. I mean, it's, it's not easy to write a good book. Never mind a trilogy. Never mind two trilogies. Right. Never mind all the other books that right. he's done. And We're curious, is, is, does he have political aspirations? Well, he certainly wants to continue the activism that he's taken part in on yeah. social media. And I would say never easy also to just follow what your heart tells yeah. you to do as well. We'll be right back.